Welcome back to Grown Folk Talk with Patrice. We are riding the grief roller coaster, managing grief. That's what we're talking about today. Um, Gina, I remember a few years ago, a good friend of, of mine and my husband, his, I got a call to say his father died. Mm -hmm. I went to his house. My husband actually called me and said, since so so his father died, you better go check him. Went to his house. I knocked on the door. He opened the door. I walked in. I didn't speak. He didn't speak. He sat down on the couch. I sat on the couch. We watched the whole seven o'clock news. And I got up, walked to the door and said, if you need me, call me. Hmm. I never said anything about his father dying, how, how I felt, because I didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. His father died suddenly. Yes. I had no clue what to say. Mm -hmm. And I felt like, I'm just, let me just sit here and maybe I'll start talking. Maybe he'll start talking. Yeah. We never said a word. And when I left, I said, if you need us, you know, we're here. And years later, he said, you have no idea how much that meant to me. Mm -hmm. He said, I didn't want to talk. I didn't feel like talking, but I knew you were there. Correct. So I'm saying that to say sometimes we, we, we think we're helping. Yes. We and maybe do. we're doing the opposite. <laughs> you are a certified grief recovery specialist. Mm -hmm. Why, why did you feel you needed to be certified? Like you, you're Gina Spence. You have an outreach ministry. You mm -hmm. go around. You've been helping people for years. So how, what, how come, why, why did you feel the need to be certified? Well, I was going out there, you know, mm -hmm. just be, doing what I've been doing all these years. Right. And I had a conversation with a gentleman who said, Ms. Spence, you cannot help me. Whoa. You're not certified. You're not qualified. You don't understand what I need. Oh, he needed papers. Um, he needed someone who could take him beyond a prayer. I got you. He needed someone who could. Because you were going and praying. Yes. That, that okay. was my outreach, okay. right? Okay. Got you. Um, and it really challenged me, honestly, mm. because I was, then I reached, and I was like, well, what do people do for grieving people? Right. And that's when I found out about the, the Grief Recovery Institute, which specifically zeroes in on grief. Grief is yes. what they do. Yes. Grief and loss. Yes. And I can tell you, once I went in and became certified and trained, mm -hmm. what I was doing before was not helping at all. Oh, it, it, it wasn't. I was, I was showing up. Okay, you I were showing up. I, I didn't have any more to offer because I didn't know any better. Other than just I showing up. Exactly. And so I and praying and praying, which is important because we were talking about the role that the clergy and the faith yes. community, they play a vital role. Absolutely. In fact, most of these young men are going to end up in front of their pulpit. Okay. Because they bury them. Yes, that's right. right. That's but then right. where does the pastor go? How right. do how because everybody's grieving, right? Yes. So what we discovered was two things. When I became a certified grief recovery specialist, they offered a course on how to train other people. Okay. Like in, the, in other words, if you're a teacher, right, we would come in and we would train you on how to help grieving children. So if a child came to school, this child's parent has been know, killed I, or died exactly. in an accident or whatever exactly. or anything. Yep. It can be just, okay, so and so you're back. We're glad to see you. We missed you. Okay, turn to page seven. Exactly. It is specific to what happened to that child mm -hmm. or, or how to how to address what happened to that child. Exactly. And not only that, but the signs. Even they may come in, the, mm. to some children may come to school and just be cold. They may not want to talk to you. They right. may not want to address it. But you're watching them and you know what you're looking for. Okay. You're looking for specific okay. signs. You're looking and for that's what you train people to exactly. do. Okay, got you. You're looking at how, what's appropriate. How do you tell an eight-year-old what wording is right. appropriate and what is not? Right. We have to um, advise schools on if some, like one of the teachers passed, right. you know, do we tell the children or right. how, do, what do, how do you handle this? Yes. Um, should, should, should a child view a body? Mm. You know, mm. is, what's the appropriate age for a child to look at? Someone who's dead. Right. So these are the types of things that we help people with and we train people to address. And we found that in doing that, like a lot of teachers, like I did, I got my degree in math or I'm an English teacher. I really don't know what to do with grief. I'm not trained in that. Right. I'm an English teacher. Right. So we give them the tools and we give them the information that is required so that they can help that child if and then the child desires to be helped. But to, to have them in your presence every day mm -hmm. and not know what to do is like going to your friend's house. Right. And just, and just it's, sitting. It's, it's, it's not comfortable. Right. It's not easy yes. to, to speak about these things. People don't even like to use the word dead. Dead. I you know? noticed but that. But we have to because. It, because it is. Uh, it's that's what it is. And even when we're talking with children, if you if we didn't tell those kids that the teacher had passed mm -hmm. and somebody else told them and they found out, you don't right. know how it's going to affect them. 
Right. You know what that reaction is going to be. And then they don't trust you anymore. Exactly. Because, because they're going to say, me. you didn't tell me the truth. Right. So most times it's, it's much easier to, t children are resilient. Yes. They are very resilient people. And they look at us. They're going to take their grief from the way you dealt with right. it. They're going to look at you and see how you dealt with right. it and say, oh, that's how you do it. Okay? Right. We don't do nothing. We don't talk about it. We don't address it. We don't acknowledge so it. So then that's how they and do. And that's how they do. But they, or, they aren't built to, to handle all of that. Not at all. So being able to, when you do have the conversation with that child, know how to, have, how to engage them, how to enter the conversation. Right. Sometimes it's art therapy. Sometimes it's not talking at all. Sometimes okay. it's like, draw a picture of daddy. Write something about daddy that you remember. It's not okay. a conversation all the time. Okay. Sometimes it is art therapy. Sometimes We have one little boy whose uh, father used to take him to get his hair cut, right? Mm -hmm. That was the big moment. Right. So yes. when he passed, the mom was like, I can't afford to take him to get a haircut every week. Mm. So we went to the same barber shop and we said, listen, the one thing that this kid needs to continue with is this haircut. Right. The whole barber shop now takes care of this kid. Oh, That's my what dear. they could do right. to give him some type of normalcy. Yes. So they go to his That's football game. Right. So, not, so not the just people the, at the barber shop now go to they, the football game. They wrap game. all the love and care around him. So there are things that we you can give and help yes. people, but you got to find out what it is. What they need. Right? So there there was another situation where a, a guy took somebody to a barber shop and the child had a meltdown. This was mm -hmm. a ballpark. Right. So he's like, let me go take your, you know, daddy right. take you. But the godfather didn't know that was a trigger. Yes. So he didn't know because the kid had a meltdown. So he didn't right. know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So being mm -hmm. able to help people to recognize that these are things that you can do to help a child and these are things that you can do that may harm them. Right. We need tools. We absolutely need tools mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in order for us to be effective support. Yes. And sometimes people feel like they're at a loss as to, do I bring it up as we said earlier? Do I bring it up? Do I not say anything? Do I say, how are you feeling today? Whether it's a birthday or a death anniversary or whatever it yeah. is, it's very uncomfortable. It can be very uncomfortable. And most times it's the, commu the, the communication yes. that people don't know what to do. They right. don't know how to answer it, how, right. how, what to say. You know, right. If you knew that that child didn't have a good relationship with his daddy at all. Right. Okay, how do I, what do, what do I do with this? Because how does he feel? Even though he didn't have a good relationship with his daddy, how he still, does he how does he feel? feel? Right, he may right? still, so the grief might be a little worse because he's now never going to have well, the opportunity. The, there's two levels of grief for this kid. He's grieving a father that mm -hmm. he never that, knew. Right. But the conflict is the fact that that's still his father. Right. So that, that, that definitely, did, that requires a specific type of approach and yeah. process. Right. Because I mean, as long as people are living, there's always a hope that we can work it out. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day we'll talk. Maybe one day I will sit yep. down with my dad yep. or my parent mm -hmm. and have a conversation or, or be in his life. Or, 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 or maybe they're even, oh, I'm so mad at him, but mad at him, yep. mad at him, but at least they're there. And then when they're gone, then it's, it's, it changes the, the, everything. There's a whole segment in the session that deals with I wish I could, I wish I would, right. I should have. I it's right. a little suction. Yeah, because that's a because, lot of guilt. Oh, yeah. Because that people have to carry. They do, they do. And again, because you cannot go back, right. you got to find a way to live with it. Right. How do you do that? That's the work okay. that they do. So that's work you do as well. They're mm -hmm. hard ones because they're going, yeah. they're going. They can't. Mm -hmm. So you can write a letter. You can do all of yeah. that stuff. Yeah. But you can't have that face-to-face -face conversation no, with them. But so how now do we deal with the grief mm -hmm. and the, 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 oh, I wish I could have, would exactly. have, should have. And there, I mean, like I said, I went through it myself. And I can tell you that it works because I went through it. Really? Um, it's, it is worth it. Yeah. Um, and you have to be, like I said, patient with each individual. Right. You have to acknowledge that every griever is individual. Right. You also have to acknowledge that people uh, have different seasons in their grief journey. Absolutely. That only they have. Right. And they're going to tell you. You're going right. to say to me, Miss Beth, I don't really feel like talking about that today. Right. I have to acknowledge that and be okay with it. Yes. As the therapist, as right. the person who's yeah. helping me. Can't but get a offended. lot of times, most times when you go into constant sessions, there's an eight-week program. And when it's over, it's over. Right. Okay. But some people gotcha. need time. Right, people right, right. People need different right. approaches. Yes. You know, sometimes there's a whole family meeting that has to take place oh. before we can even begin the whole brief process. Okay. There are these pockets that have these beat gapping holes now that the person is gone. Right. So if we didn't deal with it when the person was alive and they died, then we still got to deal with it. Right. But how do we deal with it now? It's harder. 
because the dynamics have now changed. Exactly, exactly. The family is now different. Mm-hmm. And there are still some things that have to be worked out. Exactly. And people, you know, a lot of people want to help. That's what we found. Like once we get, once they allow us in this space, and yeah. like I said, I always say it is an absolutely privilege to be in somebody's group space. It oh, is, I could it, it is It is an absolute privilege because it's such a, a intimate Yes. And personal yes. space. So when it people is. let you into that space, yeah. you will want to know how privileged you are. Right. And you would also want to be prepared mm-hmm. Absolutely. to support them in the best way that they need. So you exactly. have, so the guy was right. Where's your papers, Miss yes. Benz? You got to be right? certified to do this work. And the work is rewarding. Oh, I mean, I'm sure. I have seen people who were, I mean, just so overwhelmed, with grief, yeah. so angry, yes. so lost, so confused, so conflicted. Yes. After they went through the program and got the tools yeah. and understood that nothing was wrong with them. Right. They were grieving and nobody's analyzing and judging them because they're grieving. Mm-hmm. They were able to move on, not forget. Right. Because you can never forget. Because that's an issue too. People are afraid that if I move on, mm-hmm, that, that means I've forgotten that yeah. person. You can never forget. I no. I tell people, God gave us two things. He gave us a mind and he gave us a memory. Yes. And your memory is your memory. Yes, that's right. And every memory that you will ever have of your brother, nobody can ever take that away. No. They can never take it away. But that's something that I had to reconcile with myself mm-hmm. this year mm-hmm. when I turned 60. Yes. And so, for so as I said, my brother died nine months before we turned 50. So mm. my first birthday without Patrick was my 50th. So people are celebrating their 50s. Mm-hmm. You know, you turn mm-hmm. 50, it's a big celebration. And it was absolutely horrible. I mean, it was, I ended up in emergency several times. Mm-hmm. I was having anxiety and palpitations. I was literally having chest pain. My heart literally hurt. Yes. And do you know that is, that is a natural response yes. to the loss that you yeah. experienced? Yeah. I was People in physical pain. pain. I was in physical pain. Yeah. And I ended up in emergency several times. And you know, they give you the paper when you leave mm-hmm. that tells you what the diagnosis is. It was grief. Yeah. They actually put it on the paper. Yeah. I still have it. It was yeah. grief. And so over the years, my birthday has, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a trigger. It's a painful time. It's very, very painful. Yeah. And so the next year, and then, so I've had 10 birthdays without mm-hmm. Patrick. And, and so, so, you know, some, it's difficult every year. You know, mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm crying before I even open my eyes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And just the thought, it's for him, really, like, yeah. he deserved to still be here. And this year, I made a decision. Mm-hmm. This year, I said, Patrick will never be out of my heart. Mm-hmm. He would never be out of my thoughts. He'd never be out of my memory. But I also decided that I wanted to celebrate me this year. Mm-hmm. It was a decision. Mm-hmm. And I told my husband that. Yeah. And, uh you know, the, you, leading up to it. Mm-hmm. So I tell my, my husband said, well, I really want to do something nice for you. Yes. you. You deserve it. You're turning 60. And so he, he said, whatever, I, I want to plan something. And I said, whatever you plan, just don't tell me. Okay. I don't want the opportunity to talk okay. him out of it. So yeah. over the years, we've had our friends come by, have a mm-hmm. great supportive group of friends. Good. Friends come by or we go for dinner and things like that. But nobody knows what to say. Nobody knows the right thing to yeah. do and stuff. Right. So, so he said, I want to have this. I said, do whatever, just don't tell me. Mm-hmm. And, and I, all year I'm deciding I'm going to celebrate me. I had a dinner in July, just mm-hmm. in case I didn't feel like it in August, <laughs> okay. right? So I did all of that, working up to Patrick Steele in my heart, mm-hmm. but I'm still here. I have, I'm not going to, it doesn't mean I'm forgetting yeah. him. Exactly. And, and so my husband and my friends had this whole big surprise party for me. Mm-hmm. And we remembered Patrick. We didn't forget him. We still, celebrated you know, we him. celebrated yeah. him. And so, but the, uh, that's the time. That's when I was ready. That's when you were ready. That's when I was ready. That is so key in anyone's grief journey. Yes. When the person is ready. Yeah. Or at least giving them the opportunity when they're ready to to come into a space where they can get the help that they need. That's right. But that's it. Yeah. That's it. So I never went for counseling or anything like Mm -hmm. that. It's just been a journey of people understanding my friends and my husband and my family supporting me Mm -hmm. from a distance or right right where I was at and being okay with whatever my choice was until I said, I'm ready to mm-hmm. celebrate me. Mm-hmm. I'm turning 60 and I'm still here. Wow. Yeah. That's for you. Yeah. And, and, and so, and it has been a pivotal change. It's been pivotal in changing my life. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, my 60th birthday was life changing. Yeah. We are going to come back and continue this conversation about yes. managing grief here on Growing Food Talk with Patrice. We'll be right back. 